you give it a wiggle to make sure it's in there tight. And that's it. Here on this farm we produce maple syrup. My name is Stefan Cantor and uh, along with my husband Howie, uh, we own and operate Deep Mountain Maple located in the Northeast Kingdom of Vermont. Specifically maple farming I got into with my husband Howie. We sugared, which is the term for making maple syrup, on someone else's land uh, when we first began. But the very next year we bought our own piece of land um, a forest of maple trees, which is called a sugar bush. I started doing it in uh, 1980 in South Richford, Vermont. Mostly I uh, thought it was interesting, and someone said, okay, here's the job. You put on these snowshoes and start climbing these mountains. And I said, that's work. So I, I really like it. Both of us um, have a real attraction to forest agriculture, to silviculture, to farming that has to do with the production of trees. If you live in northern New England for very long, you quickly understand that, one, the seasons of the year are very important to your yearly cycle. Um, winter is long and very intense and cold. When spring finally comes, it's the most amazing thing that ever happened <laughs> every year. And the beauty of making maple syrup is that the season of production is exactly that moment in the year when winter is transforming into spring and you have to get out there after you've been, you know, in the house far too much for far too long you have to get out into the woods as the sun begins to rise higher in the sky and the days become a little brighter and the weather becomes a little warmer you're out there working with the trees and uh, you take a little bit of sap from each tree not too much you know the trees don't mind you boil this sap which is thin like water and barely sweet until it's maple syrup it's an awesome process the reason sap runs when it's cold at night and warm in the day, the sap runs, but what's happening is the pressure in the tree is higher than the pressure outside the tree. So when you have some vacuum, one, you can suck everything out of the lines, it doesn't get stuck in there, and two, it changes the pressure so the tree does run more. So we do that, we've embraced that technology trying to get more sap it doesn't hurt the tree. In fact, we drill a much smaller hole than we used to. That was what sold me on it. We've been making syrup for 27 years, and um, we've been selling our maple syrup at the Green Market here in New York City for all of those years. Currently, we have a stand at the Union Square Green Market every Friday and Saturday year-round. It takes 40 gallons of sap to make one gallon of syrup, um, so it's a lot of boiling. and. Uh, Let's see, two, two days ago I boiled about 16 hours, and last night I boiled about 13 hours, and both nights got done at 2 in the morning. To boil the syrup, we use wood for fuel, as opposed to oil or propane that other people use. Uh, we use wood from this forest, uh, from trees that we cull, old trees, or trees that we thin or trees that have died, or branches that fall down. We also buy uh, slab wood, which is the waste wood from a local sawmill. Howie always says, you know, sugaring is something that gets into your blood. Your whole being, your whole sense of the world becomes inextricably uh, tied up with this changing of the seasons. And uh, it's, it's something pretty special. It, I think it either grabs you or it doesn't. And... Uh, for both of us, uh, it was just something we came to. We neither of us grew up sugaring. You know, we didn't we didn't grow up with in a family that did that. But when we found it, we knew it was what we wanted to do. Having done this now for almost three decades, I have a great respect for the tradition of maple syrup, for its history, and. Um, it's quite an amazing product. 
it's a really wonderful thing. And I, I, I often say that I think maple syrup production is the ultimate slow food. It has to be done with respect to the slow nature of the process. You wait for the trees to give you the sap. You have no control over it. It's all about the weather. It's all about when the days warm up above freezing and the nights are still cold. There's all kinds of crazy pressure stuff going on in the tree that pushes, that pulls sap, the water and the minerals out of the ground and puts them up in the branches of the trees to make the new leaves. And, you know, you just take a little bit of this and a little from each tree until you've got thousands of gallons of sap and then you boil it and boil it and boil it and boil it until it's like ambrosia, nectar of the gods. I'm really honored to have found it, to be part of carrying on that tradition. It's a real spiritual process. It's, you're here with the trees and if you've seen the sugar house, you know, it's an old shack, but you're there uh, all night for three or four weeks every year with fire and steam and stuff. So, you know, it's not just a factory product. It's, it's different. It's how we like to do it.